Hi, my name is Rebecca Lawson. Um, I am a student in Dr. Briere's uh, class of literacy development. Um, in our class, we study different reading theories, and today I'm going to talk to Regina Sutherith. Hello. <laughs> who is the LTDS at Glengarry Elementary School. Um, so we are going to be talking about learning to read three critical areas of early learning, um, which is by Fontes and Pinnell. Um, so in this article, they talk a lot about um, wordless picture books. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you had any experience working with them yourself. Um, yes, actually I was reading recovery trained so when we begin working with students, oftentimes we create wordless picture books um, during Roaming Around the Known, um, a time when we're just getting kids warmed up to the idea of reading and really kind of get them thinking about early reading behaviors that perhaps they missed in their classroom instruction. So um, we either used books that we already had that were wordless picture books or created them um, and just really think that it's a great way to start establishing a reading routine with students that may not have been um, in a classroom where there were a lot of interactive read-alouds or they just didn't grow up exposed to having a parent or an adult read-aloud. So yes, I have used them. <laughs> so as I was reading, there was a quote in there that says, um, they call this behavior talking like a book. Yes. So I like that, like, so the kids start reading and understanding and they realize that, like, I guess when they, you, you're you reading, you don't really sound like you're talking to somebody, <laughs> but then you, they start copying that and then they start writing it. So do you notice, like, when kids start to talk like books? Or? Yes. Um, especially if it's a familiar read, if you've read a book aloud to them or they start to pick up on the fact that your voice changes with different pages, they'll start to imitate that. And so their intonation goes up and down and they'll um, try to imitate the way you read. Um, it's actually really cute. And it's kind of interesting to watch because they understand that a person's voice changes sometimes when they're reading different books. Um, it's. Um, even with my own children, I have two of my own children, and reading to them, I noticed that before they could even really talk, um, they would sit with books that they heard me read to them, and they would babble, and it would be imitating uh, mom or dad reading aloud to them, and their little babbling would go up and down like they knew this is something that people do. Um, it's really, really fascinating. This, we kind of watched a video in my um, my language class for ELL of like just the kids even talking like before they can speak mm -hmm. we watched a dad like talking to his son and he oh. wasn't saying any like real words but his voice was going up and down too telling him the story mm -hmm. yeah they do definitely notice and absorb what you're doing um, and want to imitate to make it mm -hmm. sound like they're really reading mm -hmm. it's cute uh, so another quote that I kind of like highlighted um, says one very enjoyable way to help children construct stories themselves is using wordless picture books. Mm -hmm. These books require the reader to infer the story from illustrations. Great wordless books capture children's imagination, help them generate language. So like especially working with like my puzzle student mm -hmm. and the vocabulary is difficult and she doesn't really understand a lot of the words that are in different books so she can like use the pictures and kind of build the stories herself right. and like, it's sometimes really funny you'll notice the students looking at the picture and mm -hmm. then you definitely observe that they're not attending to the text they're looking at the picture and just making up words that would go along with the picture, mm -hmm. um, knowing that these pictures have some meaning in the story, but they're still confused on 
um, is it the picture driving the story or is it the text and there's somewhere in between mm-hmm. um, and they'll just add words or omit words or just make up something that goes along with the picture um, it's it's really kind of fun <laughs> no we like well we talked about um, Adams as like a theorist and she kind of talks like completely the opposite about oh yes all this that they shouldn't look at the pictures and they should know all every word mm-hmm. by word and um when we were talking about like Goodman and his ideas of mm-hmm. pulling in like using the pictures and letting them guess and figure out and mm-hmm. building meaning first and that's kind of where like I guess this shift is going in yes. the curriculum, right? Yes, definitely a shift towards using more phonics-based instructions mm-hmm. where students are now required to look at the letters and the patterns within words and less relying on pictures or the meaning of the story. Um, I, me, personally, find that there's, um, just because of my background, mm-hmm. um, that there's a lot of in-between um, that I think as we're teaching students to read early on, they do need to know that sometimes pictures will carry some meaning Mm -hmm. um, and it is okay for them to look at the pictures. But when we're in elementary school and we are teaching kids to actually read using phonics, spelling and word study is important that they do have to realize that the text itself is what we're looking at when we're reading. so it's a little hard for a lot of teachers right now because the research um, that is driving our district is pushing the opposite way Mm -hmm. of what we've been doing for so long Um, so and I don't think it's really the opposite way we were always focusing on text but it is something that we were balancing Um, and that that may have been just a um, a miscommunication that some teachers were thinking that we were just having kids guess at words, mm-hmm. which is not true. <laughs> no. mm-hmm. So I guess as um, we can wrap this up as we're getting to about eight minutes here, mm-hmm. um, so what do you think the change in the curriculum focusing more on like foundational skills and moving away from like building meaning from Mm -hmm. pictures kind of has they were talking about from this book how do you think that'll affect the students in the future well I think that both areas are important Mm -hmm. for students as they're becoming proficient readers Um, I do think that having some knowledge of how words work and um, those building blocks um, are what will get our students really moving right now Mm -hmm. Um, I do think think that reading for meaning is what we're doing anyway Mm -hmm. but um, having those foundation skills early on especially in K 1 and 2 will help students when they start to tackle some of those larger words um, and they're looking for patterns within words so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing Mm -hmm. but it's just something that we've um, are just becoming more systematic and purposeful in our phonics instruction and less um, just uh, teachers need a little bit more guidance on how to teach kids um, to break down those words correctly so it I think with anything we do it takes several years before we can see any results Um, so I look forward to seeing how this shift in teaching helps our students in this district Well, thank you for talking with me today. You're welcome, Miss Lawson. (laughs)